Well, not with my company card. It got compromised. It got yeah. compromised. At the Leopard Lounge. <laughs> of course it did. Oh, oh. Where's the Leopard Lounge? Of course it did. What? Oh, it was, I got it at Toys R Us, Chick Fil A, and Leopard Lounge. Oh wow! Toys R Us, what a random. That's what I said. <laughs> In what city? Palm Beach, Palm Beach, Florida. Oh, you know I wasn't there. I do not. <laughs> I do not know you there. You know, I've only seen you here the last two weeks once, so I don't know oh. you there. Toys R Us, Florida. That's where <laughs> you've been. <laughs> that's right where I'd go. <laughs> This episode of Bourbon Pursuit is brought to you in partnership by the following. The UPS Store franchise is your key to financial freedom, being your own boss, and having complete control of your time. Learn more about having your own top-ranked franchise that offers the stability of a world-renowned brand and business model by visiting theupsstorefranchising.com slash bourbon. The 8 Smart Mattress is the same price, same comfort, and just as well-reviewed as the best beds in a box but it actually helps improve your sleep with cutting edge features. Visit 8sleep.com slash pursuit and use code pursuit to get $100 off all mattresses. Hey everyone, we just did our monthly giveaway this week to all of our Patreon supporters who are donating $5 more per month to help support the show. I did a option to be able to say, do you want a book or do you want some, maybe some decent bourbon samples? And oddly enough, everybody took the bourbon samples and everybody really wanted Booker's Rye. So, I don't know. Maybe it's just something that everybody hasn't had a chance yet, but it's a it's a stellar ride if you haven't had it. This also marks the one year anniversary for our Patreon campaign. Thank you to everyone that has supported the show for an entire year and those that are joining every day. It's appreciated so much and you have no idea what it means to help drive the podcast to grow bigger and better. Also, all the shipments for t-shirts, koozies, and samples for our Patreon subscribers of August and September will be going out this week and next week. We're inching closer to the new goal that we'll have a bottle of bourbon at every single giveaway every single month. So go to patreon.com slash bourbonpursuit and help support the show. Remember to take some time and write an iTunes review for us as well. And, you know, good luck on bourbon hunting this fall. Everything is starting to trickle out nationwide. And I think with the amount of bottles that are coming out, everybody's going to have just a little bit of luck. With that, enjoy this week's episode. Welcome back to the episode of the Bourbon Pursuit Podcast, the official podcast of bourbon. Your host here tonight is Kenny, and uh, Ryan, of course, can't join me again today, but you know we have a, a pretty exciting show, and I've got back, uh, should I say, we've got a, another co-host stand-in, and I've got Shannon Follett with me today. So Shannon, Hello. how's it going? It's going awesome. Thanks for having me. So for anybody that uh, either doesn't know you, hasn't followed you on social media or Facebook, or has just never heard of Shannon before, kind of <laughs> get an idea of who is Shannon. Most happy. Haven't probably, but um, I'm just bourbon curious. I've been um, in the industry as far as uh, tourism for about four years, a couple different facets. Uh, a company that you know created experiences all over the Bourbon Trail, anywhere from you know small bachelor groups to several hundred people with you know great great guests. Um, been work. I worked at the Bullet Experience for a while, and uh, then I'm a proud member of the Bourbon Mafia, mm. Mafietta. So uh, just love love the industry, love love Kentucky. So and you're also a free agent right now, right? So I if, am. Uh, if anybody's out there looking to <laughs> find somebody that is uh, gung ho into bourbon and uh, is you know, definitely a part of hospitality has a background in it, then uh, Shannon might be yeah, your person, right? Thanks for the plug. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> go ahead and just start spitting off your resume right now. Yeah. <laughs> so speaking of hospitality, today's, uh, today's going to be an interesting show because this is a, a first time we're actually going to have somebody that is runs a, a, a visitor center, right? Because I think it's it's kind of a, the new wave of things that are happening of of bourbon. You know, for years, there just there was never, uh, nobody, nobody cared about going to see a distillery unless you know you're a huge bourbon geek but now as bourbon is becoming the new napa valley 
you're seeing essentially every single distillery, and I mean every single one, is building out new visitor centers, or they are expanding their visitor centers, or they are building new experiences in downtown Louisville to make sure that you know if people don't want to venture out to outside of you know Louisville, they can experience everything they want to with bourbon here in downtown. So with that, we have Jeff Crow on the show. Jeff is the GM of visitor experiences for Heaven Hill. So Jeff, welcome. Good morning. Good morning. Yeah. How are you all? Good. And so many of that wasn't listening this beforehand uh jeff was screaming in his corvette uh, all the way from bardstown here because he he thought he was going to the, he, was, he didn't know this was actually going to happen this morning i was thinking it was tomorrow you know um being over both visitor centers we have one in bardstown kentucky and one in louisville i travel you know 50 percent of the time i'm in the car going to one or the other so i planned my day always ahead of time i didn't plan very well for this one obviously so my outlook counter said you should be here in 55 minutes i'm like oh that's not good but here i am i did drive safely i made i wore the seat belt i did all the i followed all the rules and regulations to get here, but I did make it on time. <laughs> so uh, let's talk a little bit about you and your background. I mean, did you come from um, a hospitality background? Did you come from just whiskey and bourbon? Kind of talk about you just a little bit. So I came from a long line of hospitality um, and tourism backgrounds. So about 20 years worth of tourism background. I started many years ago as an economic and industrial development person for a small community in eastern Kentucky and in that role I kind of assumed some tourism duties for a local congressman's program for that region and over time then I became the president and CEO of a group called Tour Southern and Eastern Kentucky and we represented 49 counties in southern and eastern Kentucky to help them find funding or ways to better themselves as far as jobs or that type of stuff Um, and then about four years ago I thought you know it's time for a change and I happen to know someone in the industry and I just said you know if you ever have any openings I would love to know more about bourbon and just so happened heaven hill was building this new facility that we're sitting in now and they said we'd love to talk and i'm like that's three hours from my home it's probably not going to work out for me (laughs) Um, but then i came and i met the family and the leadership team and immediately there was a connection and four years later here i am and my home is still three hours away so it's well worth my time to drive Mm -hmm. here every day because it's such an amazing company Mm -hmm. so i I guess before we dive into it tell people where we are today uh, so they have an idea right so we are in downtown louisville at 528 west main street and the evan williams bourbon experience Um, we've been open almost four years we opened in november of 2013 Hard to believe. It's yeah. almost like a blip. And uh, for anybody that's on the inside, there's actually a shorthand way you say the Evan Williams bourbon experience. So anybody that does come here and they want to say it, how do they sound like uh, somebody that's on the inside? We say we're going to go to the UB. The UB, Which right? is, you know, E-W-B-E. Uh-huh. So it's kind of grown from that. Everybody kind of calls it that now, which is kind of cool, mm-hmm. um, especially when we're out pe- speaking publicly. People say, oh, I just visited the UB. And I'm like, that's kind of cool that it's become this <laughs> following that we have. Right. So now you know the lingo if you are into it. So uh, was life a little bit less hectic, you know, back in back in 20. 13 before all this kind of started booming and and building out and stuff like that life was a little less hectic um, not nearly as much fun i can say that um so for the first time ever in my 40 plus years of life i actually took the summer off i quit my official job in like may of 2013 and i did not assume the role with heaven hill until august so it was the first summer in all my life that i had to spend the entire summer with my son baseball games poolside those kinds of things so that was great that heaven hill allowed me to enjoy that time before we rolled out the red carpet or as we'd say here the orange carpet since that's our theme color here at evan williams yeah Yeah. so i guess uh talk a little bit more about just bourbonism itself and kind of like how you've seen the growth pattern um from between here as well as the uh it's for anybody that asks this and it's more in the ub today but uh jeff is also in charge of the what's also called the BHC, or the Bourbon Heritage Center, uh, out in Bardstown. So kind of talk about uh, the numbers and growth that you've seen uh, in your time here between these two locations. Well, you know, basically we opened, like I said, November of 2013 here. We had no idea what to even expect. You know, you've always heard, build it and they will come. We all know that's not always the case. So we've gone from zero visitors to 100,000 visitors a year. So we've seen a significant growth in four years um, here at the UB. And at the BHC in Bardstown, the Bar- uh, Bourbon Heritage Center, it is significantly growing every year. But the difference is here in downtown Louisville, and I'm sure other distilleries along Main Street will tell you the same thing, it's a totally different clientele. In Bardstown, we're seeing true whiskey and bourbon connoisseurs who come in and want to know more and learn more, and they want to buy that unique one-of-a-kind bottle because they're driving in their cars. Mm -hmm. Uh, Here in downtown Louisville, we're seeing lots of hotel stayers, um, convention goers, people who just want to come in and get a quick taste of who we are Mm -hmm. and what we have to offer. So here we see lots of, you know, accessories, T-shirts, things they can pack in their luggage and get home because, as you know, you can't put your bourbon on the plane and take it home with you unless you check it in your luggage, and some people just don't plan for that. So it's just two different clientele that we're seeing. So we've had to rethink a little bit of our strategies uh, on how to exercise what we offer to people. Um, But we're beginning to grow 
rapidly now and we seem to be on the right track. So pro tip for anybody that is traveling and buys a bottle of bourbon, because I've known to do this quite on many occasion, you go wherever hotel you're staying at, you go to the uh, the workout facility and you steal towels and you wrap your bourbon up in those towels, you put it in your suitcase. <laughs> you and don't then, work out, yeah, you take a towel. Yeah, just steal the towels, yeah. I'm like, oh yeah, I'm going to the pool, I need like six towels today, right? <laughs> well, so that's, and that's what you use so you don't get dinged on like, oh, why are there towels missing in my hotel room, Or you right? could use your own clothes, Kenny. <laughs> or you, you can use shoes. Well, you I just slide your oh, bourbon yeah. in your shoes. You, you could yeah. do that, you could do but that. But lucky for you, at both of our locations, we sell an inflatable tube. Mm-hmm. The bottle drops in and it inflates around it for like a couple dollars, you know, two, three dollars. Yeah. And you can basically bounce it like a basketball once it's in that. So nice. it's very safe. It takes up a little more room in your luggage. Yeah. But which would you, which would you rather make at home with? Your bathing suit or Kentucky bourbon? So yeah. absolutely. <laughs> so uh, talk a little bit about the difference between the Evelyn Williams Bourbon Experience and the Bourbon Heritage Center. Kind of like, uh, I, I guess you could say the experience in general. Uh, what are something that you're going to see at one place or that you can't get at the other, so on and so forth? So the Bourbon Heritage Center, since it's the oldest, because we'll celebrate our 14th year there this coming fall, which is cool. pretty amazing. We were one of the first with a visitor center to the magnitude that that one is. Um, there, I call that the heartbeat of the Bourbon Country, because um, that's where you go and you get to visit our Rick House. You get to do tastings. You get to see the landscape of where it all started and where it came from. You get to see our bottling line. You know, as you know, many years ago, 20 plus years ago, um, our main distillery burned in Bardstown. So we had to make a really hard decision on to shut down production or to continue on and buy one. And of course, the family chose to rise from the ashes, as you could say, and have done an amazing job of it. And we bought a distillery here in downtown Louisville. So you can't visit our our distillery like you do some of the others when you go. So we try to take great pride in making sure when you're at the Bourbon Heritage Center that you learn to taste the bourbon properly. You learn to appreciate the history of it. You learn to um, how to share your knowledge with other people. Uh, we get told a lot that we're probably one of the best tastings on the trail only mm-hmm. because we really go into detail about how to part your lips when you take a, take a drink or when you sniff and one cube of ice or neat and all the different lingos that go along with it. So that's one of the biggest differences and then when the family decided to build this facility in 2012, and we didn't open 2013, after you've seen nine distilleries, we all make it the same way. Mm-hmm. We all age it the same way. You know, it's just a science that we all have to follow. And to be bourbon, it has to follow certain guidelines. Mm-hmm. So here we want a different twist. So here, if you come to the bourbon experience, you're going to see more of a historical side of who Evan is, who... Um, how the Ohio played a role in it, how Evan played a role in the industry worldwide as it is today. Mm. So it's very historically focused. And we do have a small distillery here on site. Um, Charlie Downs is our artisanal distiller, and Charlie's been with the company for 40-plus years, which is pretty amazing um, that he left what he was doing for the company to come and do this for us. Um, so he's been a huge part of our success in downtown Louisville. Uh, but here we focus more, like I said, on the history. We still focus on the tasting component, but not as much on the making and the barreling and the aging. Right. Yeah, I mean, because I've, I've said it plenty of times. I'll always tell people, I'm like, all right, I, you either start at Evan Williams Bourbon Experience and then you go off to somewhere else, like you get a good foundation for all this other kind of stuff, mm-hmm. and then you can go and visit like the real deal. Or once you go and you visit two or three real deals, exactly as you said, you're like, this is getting repetitive, right? It's not really, it's like, okay, oh, oh yeah, Vendome, how weird, right? I just saw that at the last place, right? Mm-hmm. It's the same stuff that you see over and over and over again. And so this is kind of a good mix because you get, uh, as you said, history, but you also get a little bit of technology factor into it as well because there's like projectors and all this other kind of stuff that goes on, right? Mm-hmm. So I, my question to you is, is like, whose idea was it to build it like this um, in such a way that it's, uh, very, very unique in that, you know, really no other place offers anything like this today. So I came on board kind of late, you know, things were already in process of being planned for here, but we give most of that planning um, praise to Harry Shapira. Um, Harry was one of the main family members. I um, mean, it was his vision to bring us to the people. Mm-hmm. You know, one of the things we've learned is we are not in the bourbon business serving people, we're in the people business serving bourbon. And he really believed that. And so he wanted to bring this message to the community. And if you don't know anything about the Evan Williams Bourbon Experience, this building was already family owned and they were using it as a warehouse for one of their other business ventures that helped them pay for Heaven Hill Distillery many years ago. And so when it came time to bring this visitor center downtown, he was like, why build something? Let's bring life back to Main Street and be the first Mm -hmm. distillery back on Whiskey Row in over a hundred years. And so this was his, his, brainchild unfortunately harry passed a few weeks prior to our opening Mm -hmm. so if you the room we're sitting in now the wood on the walls came from the original shapira family offices for many years ago we had it shipped off and brought back so we'd have some of that part of the history here with us too and so um harry played a huge role in everything even today one of the rooms is called max and harry's bar downstairs one of the tasting rooms and we always praise harry for without him we wouldn't be where we are today 
It's amazing. Right. Huge significance. Was it his um, his idea to have the tallest maybe bourbon bottle down here? On he Wisteria? wanted to make he wanted to make a splash. I will say that. So we wanted to make sure that we were easily found on Main Street. And mm-hmm. so the five story upside down bottle pouring into the rocks glass in the lobby. I'm sure he had a whole lot to do with that. That's mm-hmm. so cool. So I, I guess that another kind of question to go with that, or you know, I, I guess uh, one tidbit that I know of is you said that you know this was owned, this was a family-owned building, and it was it, it was a storage because they had a something called the Louisville store, right? They had a Louisville store. I don't know what they sold or anything they had in there, uh, but yeah, it was it was a family uh, destination or a family-owned uh, building at one point. So yeah, I think it's really cool that they they said they saw the opportunity to bring something back to Main Street uh, because not only that is it's kind of caught fever right like you're not the you're not the only ones here now right like everybody's right. starting to build out so uh how does it make you feel that either you know you're being trendsetters or whatever it is that more people are uh starting to make their way in here in downtown louisville um we always hear that the, the shapir family likes to be the, the the leaders or the first of the game and i don't know that that's always the truth they just always like to do it and do it right if they're going to do something they're going to put their name behind it they do it 150 percent the right way and spend a lot of time, money and effort to make sure that that happens. So we're very proud. You know, everybody's like, Oh, I bet y'all are so upset with all the neighbors moving in all the competition. And we don't see them as competitions. Um, We see them as more chapters to the story that we all want to tell. Um, So the family has never, ever felt that way. Even today we, we play well together. And if you go, when you leave either of our facilities, our host will automatically say, we hope you visit Maker's Mark. We hope you visit Jim Beam. We hope you visit Willett Barton's wherever you are Mm. only because we've built such a relationship across the board we don't believe in the the mudslinging that you see in a lot of other industries Um, i'm sure on the marketing and sales side there's probably some competition going on there as far as the visitor centers and where we stand and what we offer that it's not part of our daily routine right Uh, a rising tide raises all ships right i think that's the the best way to put it especially if that sea's full of of bourbon (laughs) (laughs) even better waters yeah (laughs) So uh, talk a little bit about more about what you would learn here at the experience, um, you know, about Evan Williams, uh, the Shapiros and all that sort of stuff. So one of the main things that I think people come in and don't realize that people especially don't know our product as well as others find out that Evan is not a Mickey Mouse, that Evan Williams is a real person with a real life history that had a real family that he had to support and, and he had the real struggles of every everyday life. Um, so I think that's the biggest thing that we hear all the time. People come in and they'll be like, we didn't realize really? that he was here. And then when we say, you know, this building is basically 500 yards from where his you know, initial steel was. Um, and there's some historical markers now on the sidewalk that showcase that. Mm-hmm. So I think that's the biggest thing that we learn here. But we also learn that if you build it and you educate it, they will come and they will come and come again. Mm-hmm. The good thing about this location, especially for locals here in Louisville, is it's a great way for people who bring family in to showcase a little bit of bourbon and a whole lot of history mm-hmm. and what the city, where the city was, where they came from, what role prohibition paid and uh, played in forming the city. You know, thousands of jobs were lost within minutes. You know, within hours of prohibition hitting. So, I mean, there's lots of things that happen on this tour. And if you come and take the tour, it's about an hour long. That includes three tastings of some of our, our best products. Um, but then on the weekends, we do a speakeasy experience. If you haven't done that, you should do it. Um, it's downstairs in our speakeasy inside a locked safe. You have to have a password to get in. Um, you get a free glass when you leave, but you sample four of our premium products um, while being hosted by a barkeep from Prohibition Day. So he's in theme the whole time, but he educates you on the role. Shapiro's played. He also serve you dirty brown water too. Or? He, he, does serve, he does serve brown water, but it's pretty clear. And it's, it's pretty good. It's pretty good stuff. And then at the end of that tour or tasting, you get a real um, a skeleton key, and the skeleton key you take into our retail space, and it un- unlocks your free gift that you get for taking the tour. So it's been very successful. We only offer it on Fridays, Saturdays, and Sundays. Um, and then just in the past six months, we've offered a new tour. Now it's called Sweet and Neat. Okay. It is a whiskey and chocolate pairing that we do a couple times a week. You sample four products with four different chocolates, and we talk about, you know, the origin of the chocolates and how it plays a role in the taste. You know, you hear lots of wine mm-hmm. and chocolate tasting. What well, with the connoisseur part of bourbon growing with food and everything mm-hmm. else, we thought let's bring a little bit of chocolate to the table. Um, it's getting becoming very successful, so we're pretty pleased with that. So if you haven't done it, please mm-hmm. stop by and try it. Now talk a little bit. I know like the unique experiences down downtown Louisville, but also at the um, Heaven Hill. Um, experience you have some neat things besides the beautiful rick houses in that barrel room which yes is so, so in barstown we have a couple different tour options we have the um, mash bill tour which takes about an hour hour and 10 minutes and that is where you visit the rick houses you learn about who we are as a family what role we've played um, then we bring you back to the parker beam tasting barrel which is the largest tasting barrel 
that I know of anywhere. Um, it's a magnificent tasting bar. holds 23 people. You get to sit around inside this barrel. It's acoustically perfect. So when you talk, everybody can hear. You sample three to four of our products, depending on on the day and what we have to offer. Um, and then we now we offer a whiskey connoisseur experience, a little mm-hmm. more upscale for those guys that know a little bit about everything. Um, the thing that sets us apart... I think the, they know everything. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, well, we all know just enough to be dangerous most days. <laughs> the great thing that sets us apart with the whiskey connoisseur is we actually allow them to taste a bourbon that did not meet the standards to make it to the shelves. And a lot of companies probably don't do that and not mm-hmm. because they're ashamed of because we all have those but mm-hmm. we want people to recognize that not every barrel aging makes us money it actually loses us money so we want them to show what the master is still what the role they play they taste and some things you know so it's a 25 year old bourbon that they get to taste um it gets strange reactions. Some people love it, and then some people automatically see why we didn't put it on our shelves. So we play that out really well to show that good product versus bad product. Um, and now we just started um, a new bottled and bond tour. Happens every day. Um, so we focus on the four bottled and bond products that we have at the pre- at present time. Awesome. If you know anything about Heaven Hill, we have the most bottled and bond products on the market, uh, and so we kind of showcase four of those in this, and that will kind of evolve as different products become available on our shelves. Yeah, if for any that doesn't know about all the bottled and bond products, you got to make sure you check out one of our past episodes we have with Bernie on Bernie Lubbers, who's the brand ambassador for Heaven Hill, and it was uh, it was an I think almost an hour and a half of talking nothing but bottled and bond. It was uh, you split into two, didn't you? <laughs> we might have had to right just because it was it was so in depth, right? But he's, it was he's uh, so intense. He even has the tattoo. Did you show yeah. you the tattoo? Oh, yeah. We've yeah. seen it. We've yeah. seen it. He's a That's good, amazing. he's an awesome character. This episode of Bourbon Pursuit is brought to you in partnership by the following. If you've listened to the show before, you know that Ryan has his own business and sees perks like financial freedom, being his own boss, and having more control of his time. And you want to do that too, but maybe you're just not sure where to start. All this can be yours when you open a UPS store franchise. The UPS store has over 35 years of franchising experience and was just ranked the number four top franchise to own by Entrepreneur Magazine's 2017 Franchise 500 list. The UPS store offers stability, the support and reputation of a world-renowned brand, and a proven business model with all the training and marketing support you need to make your entrepreneurial dream come true. Stores are available in large and small markets across the country, and their franchising experts will help you find a location that's just right for you. Plus, there's financing for those who qualify and special programs for military veterans. The time to promote yourself to business owner is now. Visit the upsstorefranchising.com slash bourbon to get started today. That's the upsstorefranchising.com slash bourbon. Are you looking for a new mattress but overwhelmed with options? I was looking for a mattress online recently and found one that really stood out. The 8 Smart Mattress. It's the same price, same comfort, and just as well-reviewed as the best beds in a box. But it actually helps you improve your sleep with cutting-edge tech features. The 8 Smart Mattress comes with sleep tracking and other features like Wi-Fi-enabled bed warming and a smart alarm. At just $699, the 8 Smart Mattress is the best mattress deal. You get more, but pay less, thanks to the added technology. Get the 8 Smart Mattress and start sleeping smarter. Visit 8sleep.com pursuit and use code PURSUIT to get $100 off all mattresses plus free shipping and free returns. This great deal, combined with 8's 100-night trial, makes this a no-brainer for your next mattress purchase. That's 8sleep, E-I-G-H-T sleep dot com slash pursuit, and use offer code PURSUIT during checkout to redeem this special offer. So what do you think, um, you know, as, as you're, as you're thinking about new things and, uh, how to, how to change the dynamic, what is, is Senate bill 11 have any, um, impact on what do you think that you can offer at the UB or at BHC or anything like that? Absolutely. Um, I don't want to divulge too much, but, um, being family owned and family operated, we've taken this very seriously on the, on the impact it would have as far as, um, bars and restaurants have made us successful who we are as a company. So we wanted to make sure we didn't. I don't want to say step on their toes or infringe upon what they were making or selling on a daily basis. So we've kind of stepped back from that role with SB11 and NQ3 and being able to sell by the drink and waited out to make sure there was no um, backlash, you know, because mm-hmm. a restaurant owner feeds his family from the profits that he makes. So the family is very cognizant of the fact that for every drink we sell, it may keep them from buying a drink at X, Y, or Z bar downtown. So we've kind of stepped back from that to make sure that that's not the case. And as from what we see at this point, they've been very supportive. So we have started the process now to move forward in our own way for the NQ3 at both of our locations. It'll be two different um, ways of handling that. If you don't know what the NQ3 is, for all you out there listening, we will now be able to serve drinks 
um, by the drink, just like a bar within our facilities. We can set our own rules and regulations, and we probably will set a, a limit, you know, one or two drinks per guest per day. Mm-hmm. Um, so we won't become an open bar like that. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah, you want to, definitely don't want to open bar. <laughs> <Especially at the laughs> <story>. Yeah, there's <laughs> downtown So um, another kind of question because as we had we had kind of hinted at earlier, uh, Heaven Hill is unique in the fact that you're probably one of the only distilleries that has tours, but not of an actual. Uh, or should I say not of an actual distillery because the UB is an actual distillery, <laughs> but of your your main distillery over at the Bernheim plant. Is there ideas of future be able to say like, well, we can open this up for maybe VIP tours or something that is, um, you know, done with hand in hand with mint julep tours or something like that, right? Like, is there any idea of, of what you want to hint at? Or I can see the smirk across your face, like, <laughs> like saying like, oh, he's like, I'm already tossing the softballs or something. Here. So not, totally not a softball, but the, <laughs> the proper answer would be the one thing you'll know is the Shapiro family is always looking at a way to do things bigger and better. And so just don't turn your head and assume they're not going to do that because in the near future you may see a huge change um, that we can offer to the public. All right, so we can read between the lines there. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so I guess uh, what what do you think is uh, one of the most uh, interesting things that that you think is here either at the BHC or at the Evan Williams Experience? Um, just just kind of like you know you talked about the different types of tastings. Um, you talked about the history here, but what do you think is like that one like wow factor at each one of them? Well, the wow factor at both locations is one. We're family-owned, family-operated, and American-owned. In today's world, that's amazing. Mm-hmm. And there's no talks of that ever changing at present time, which is good for us. The third generation is playing a role right now. And if you know anything about the family or anything about the business, if you're here either place on a daily basis, you see the family. They are not calling in from somewhere making things happen. They are on the floor with us every day. And so I think that's the wow factor when people realize, oh, my gosh, that was the president that just walked through here and shook our hand. Mm-hmm. You know, where else do you go? And the president of the company will walk across, and he knows every a staff member in both facilities by first name basis. So I think that's a wow factor that totally, it is related to the industry, but totally outside that aspect of what you're asking. That's the wow factor as far as what I'm concerned. Um, I think the other wow factor for both of our facilities is the fact that we are very proud of where we are, where we came from, but we don't want to forget where we came from while we grow. Um, so you'll see a lot of things change at Heaven Hill at both of our visitor centers, but you'll always see us playing back to where we came from because the family talks about that histor- the history. Um, we just recently had the governor at the Bourbon Heritage Center for a bill signing last week. And if you don't know the family, Ann Shapira is 103 years old. And she was there with us, and she's a surprise. And he's a 50 year woman I know <laughs> and looks amazing. And she says, that the family has thrived and the business has thrived because they've always stood beside each other. And I think that's pretty amazing. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. I guess another question between these two, you know, is there a different vibe, you know, like uh, the, the, the people that go to it um, or the kind of experiences there, like, is there a different vibe between these two? There is a different vibe. Um, There's a whole different dynamic at both locations. So in Bardstown, the dynamic is a little more, I don't want to say low key, but it's a much more knowledge seeking group of people. And if you've been there, our hosts there, um, most of them are retirees who don't have to work, but they choose to work because they just love the industry so much. So they absorb everything. And so in here in downtown Louisville, we have the dynamic of people who just want to run in and go like, oh, we hear the buzz of bourbon. What is it? Can you tell me in you know 30 seconds or less? <laughs> so that's a whole different vibe. So in with those two vibes and trying to deliver the same message, we just recently created a position. We've hired a training and development manager. Um, Vicki Fugit will now go between the two facilities and make sure we're spreading the same message, the same word, that the facts match, but maybe in two different ways. The delivery is different. You know, here it's a little more, because um, the tour is media driven, the, t- the host doesn't talk as much. There, the host is the entire tour. So we want to make sure that all the same facts get out just in different ways. Mm-hmm. Right. Real cool. Real cool. Um, Anything. Okay, that's good. <laughs> well, I know your personal involvement with, um, you know, Whiskey Row and kind of Main Street Association. I'd love to kind of hear, like, you know, I'm, not that you're not busy enough that <laughs> you want to be involved with that, but I think they've deemed um, this area kind of the gateway to the bourbon country or bourbon trail, if you have anything to yeah, speak just, on kind of the association and how yeah. that plays. And, of course, you know, downtown Louisville just launched the new bourbon district, which we're part mm-hmm. of, so we're pretty excited about that, and we're our signs are up out front. So when you leave, check them out. Um, the bourbon district really quickly is totally different than the Museum Royal Main, but it's just a whole district that's dedicated to bourbon and what we offer and all the different things from restaurants to sites to historical figures. Mm-hmm. Um, but as far as Museum Royal Main, um, it's a collection of museums or attractions within a certain block radius in downtown. And when we first came on board, there was not a, a distillery as part of that. And so we were asked to kind of set that bar. And so we stepped into that role 
and it's been really good for us. So it's Muhammad Ali, the Science Center, Louisville Slugger. Yeah. Um, most of those are very family friendly, and people don't realize that we are very family friendly. Mm. You know, there's more to the process, and there's more to Evan Williams just, than just the drink. You know, there's the um, agriculture background, there's the process, there's the family side, there's, there's the historical side. There's lots of different things that that offer. Mm-hmm. So I think if you don't know anything about Museum Royal Maine. Go to the website, museumrollmain.com. Check it out. Um, when you're downtown, you can visit several of those stops, and we do sell a ticket that covers all those. Is that year-round, then? It is year-round. Oh, cool. mm-hmm. okay. It's called the main ticket, mm-hmm. so it gives you entry to all the attractions on Museum Royal Main at a discounted price. Sweet. Well, awesome. So there's another thing that I want to bring up, and that might be a touchy subject a little bit, but, you know. He changed batteries. It's going to be touchy. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but, I mean, it's, it's one of those things that, uh, you know, you kind of have to deal with, right? And it's something that the, every bourbon geek is out there, and they want to know about the special bottle releases, right? And and you're kind of overseeing a lot of that. Um, what have you all seen in regards of, like, in the past few years when it's a new Parker's or a new William and Heaven Hill, like, uh are you amazed at the response that is people are now camping out at bourbon heritage centers and all this other kind of stuff to be able to just get their hands on something? Because I mean, that wasn't a thing even five years ago, right? I'm more amazed at the loyalty. Mm. I mean, people who have been loyal heaven Hill drinkers for years, you know, there are those people in line that want to buy that bottle so they can brag they bought it. But the 90% of the people in those lines are people who have been loyal drinkers of the Parker's product since day one, the William Heaven Hill product since day two. You know, they want to be a part of this phenomenon that's growing. Mm-hmm. So they're not buying it to resell it. Most of them are buying it because they just want to put it on their shelves. So they want to be able to say, I have stayed with this company this many years. Um, every time we do it in Bardstown, I'm just amazed that people who camp out, you know, we have guys that drive three days and then want to be the first one in line. Wow. So they put their chairs up and camp for, you know, 24 hours. We don't encourage that um, mm-hmm. just because of you know safety issues, but we t- we do have guards that make sure everybody's good, and we f- we maintain the property to make sure there's no th- no foul play going on. But most people are just good, loyal people, and if you talk to them in the morning after it's over, they've made friends that have been there for five years in a row. Mm-hmm. Um, so I think that's the the people factor is the coolest factor to me in all aspects. We all make a great product. We all make great products, or we wouldn't all still be here. Um, but the people factor is what sets Heaven Hill apart. Right. I mean, is there anything that you're doing to try and because, I mean, there's no way you can get away from it, right? There's flippers no matter what you do. I mean, in your opinion, is there a, is there a, a good way that you can fairly distribute things without trying to make it seem uh, one sided or alienate people? Or is it just kind of like, you know, we'll have to figure that out as it goes? It is. It is. A, every day is a new adventure, but we have put some protocols in place. You know, it's one bottle per person per driver's license. So we've kind of mm-hmm. set that protocol for some high end things. Um, and that's helped a little bit. You'll never contain it all the way because there's always going to be that person to get around it. But it has allowed us to at least allow that one person who really wants that bottle to be able to get that one bottle. Mm-hmm. Right. You know, um, so that's kind of where we stand with it at this moment. There's always going to be new ways to approach every situation. Uh, not all are going to make everybody happy. Uh, but at the end of the day, we want to make sure we can touch as many people who want us to touch them with our product. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So another question would be, um, you know, let's talk about the future a little bit, right? Because... You have, um, you know, we've talked about Evan Williams' experience has been here since uh, 2013, right? 2013. 2013 uh, the Bourbon Heritage Center is now on its 13th year. And as you said, they you build it before people uh, before people were coming. But now you're at the, we're at the point where everybody's starting to go in expansions. People are redoing their visitor centers. Um, what do you kind of, are you guys in a, in a good kind of, uh, cause cruise control mode right now, or is, are you trying to think of, well, I mean, or do we really need to start thinking about expansion or do we need to buy the, the building, you know, but, so right next to, uh, Evan Williams bourbon experience, this other restaurant called Losas Tecas. Like, do we need to start serving bourbon inspired Mexican and just go ahead and just start migrating <laughs> yeah. that way? Right. I think if we bought the building next door, there'd be a boycott in downtown because Losas Tecas is such a, has such a following. <laughs> Even for us as a staff, we're so loyal to Losas Tecas. Um, yeah, I think that we're, we're probably on cruise control, but you're always enjoying the sites and paying attention to what's changing. Cause at some point you have to change. I mean, with today's mm-hmm. economy, nobody thinks we're going to build this building. It's going to look this way for 25 years, mm-hmm. even in Bartstown. So there's always going to be ways to update and change. Um, there are some talks at present time about new ways to handle things. Um, we'd love to see some more hands-on experiential type aspects from where we are now. Cause everybody has a tour. Mm-hmm. Everybody has hosts, and it's kind of like the barreling and bottling process. We all do it the same way. So at some point, we have to start branching away in different ways to deliver our message. And for people who don't have an hour to spend or only have 20 minutes, what can we do to impact them when they walk with They're like, wow, not only do we love Evan Williams, but we love the family story. We love where they came from. Mm-hmm. This is the product we want to drink when we get home. All right. So I, I guess during your time here, uh, you know, what have you, what have been in some of those like inspiring key lessons that you've learned um, over over your course of 
you know, three, four years here of say like, you know, maybe, maybe mistakes that you've made and learned from as well, just by having well, we to don't say have time for the mistakes. <laughs> <laughs> There's been lots of mistakes because when we opened this facility, no one had ever done it on <laughs> Main Street. Territory. And so the good thing for me was even if I messed up, nobody knew I messed up because there was nobody to measure it against. So we all learned together. Um, the family stood strong with, with me and with anybody within the building. We, we've grown from a staff of 13 to a staff of 30 in this building. So that can tell you where business has grown. Um, but the number one lesson that I learned, and I learned it the day I was hired, so you'll appreciate this, is um, I tell the story when I speak publicly because it kind of sets a tone for who we are as a company. And Shannon, you may have heard this story if you've been places. When I was hired, I went through several interviews. And the last interview was with Max Shapiro, who is our president and CEO. And I was so excited when Evan Williams wanted to interview me because all through college, I drank Evan Williams mm-hmm. after I was 21, of course, <laughs> and legal. So I was very excited. Just like college. Yeah, so I was very excited for this interview because I knew that I was going to be able to work that into my interview. Mm-hmm. And so an hour and a half into the interview, whatever is a long time, um, we talked about lots of great things. I was never intimidated by Mr. Shapiro because he was so gracious to me the entire time because um, he really listened. But at the end of the interview, he said, do you have any questions for me? And I was like, well, I'm not going to lie. I'm a little bummed. And he said, why? And I said, because I drank everyone was all through college. I just knew you were going to ask me what bourbon I drank. And he looked across the table at me, and he could have said a lot of things to me. And he said, as long as it's a Kentucky-made bourbon, we can be okay with that. Right. And he could have said, we'll teach you, we'll, we'll educate you on how to drink ours. He didn't. He never singly said. So I think that kind of sets the tone for the kind of company and mentality that they have on a daily basis. And so from that moment on, I've been very, very loyal. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That's real cool. Uh, so I guess one of the questions I might wrap it up with is, um, you know, have you had any kind of like wild stories or things that have people have done here, right? Like if, if somebody here or at the BHC is, have somebody actually like tried to dive in the, so if you're, if you're here and you look like there's a, almost like a pool of looks like bourbon, but it's water. Uh, has anybody like tried to like dive in there thinking like it's bourbon or anything We've like never that? We've never tried to dive in there, but we do probably on a daily basis, even still, people stick their hand under it before we can stop them to say it's water <laughs> and they give you this horrible look like I'm yeah it's just you have a sign water. now about pennies yeah. they're like yeah, people, were making, pennies. people were making um, wishes and throwing pennies in which was great and wonderful but they would go into our, our basin oh. and then they would clog it up so we've had to put a sign up now the pennies didn't bother us as bad as people sticking their hand in and drinking it because it is refiltered water so <laughs> we're like so that's 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 been fun every day um, but my favorite story about this building is we had a um, a person with a sightseeing issue mm-hmm. a couple years ago and she came through the lobby, and I happened to be standing there, and she said, walked up to me, and she said, someone said, you're the, the manager. And I said, yes, ma'am, I am. And she said, I just want you to know, I'm completely blind. And I said, well, we hope you've enjoyed her. She said, it's the first place I've ever been that I can hear the happiness, and I just think you should know that. Wow. And so I think that says who we are every day. Everybody walks away feeling a little bit happier, a little bit better, whether they buy our product or not. We hope they do. But if they just walk away with a really positive image of who the company is and what we offer to the public um, in downtown Louisville and across the nation, we're pretty happy with that. I think after a few drinks, you're immediately happy, right? <laughs> That's right. That's why we give you three. <laughs> That's why you <we> three. <laughs> so they always say. Uh, One, you think we're good. Two, you think we're great. Three, you're loyal for at least a couple blocks. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> they say no matter what, whether you're happy or depressed, people drink alcohol, right? Mm-hmm. So It's, it's a yeah. great industry. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that's what I always say. If you've been in a circle, I have a shirt that says bourbon's the new sexy. Hey. And so we've kind of turned that into a shirt. But, you know, bourbon's a rich man's drink and a poor man's drink and everybody in between. And I think that's part of its success. If you lose your job, you drink. If you get a new job, you drink. You get married, you drink. You get divorced, you drink a lot. Um, you know, you know, <laughs> so there's always a reason to drink and drink, you know, think wisely, drink wisely, as we say. Yeah. We're very much about responsibility here, which sometimes gets us into trouble because we're pretty strict on our pores, mm-hmm. on the ounces that we pour. And so we try to adhere to that a lot. You know, and the outside public don't understand that we have, you know, parameters that we have to follow. So mm-hmm. we're always educating the guests on why they're only getting a certain amount in each mm-hmm. tasting room. I guess another question to kind of talk about is um, you guys also, you know, you talked about the uniqueness of what you're able to offer in regards of even swag of T-shirts and stuff that are different kind of brands. Kind of talk about what you do offer like with inside the gift shops and all that sort of stuff, too. So we've taken a big turn. You know, when our gift shop first opened, we really focused on bourbon. Um, and the products that we carried. And then over time, over four years, we've learned, as I said, you know, travelers can't pack that. It's just in a carry-on luggage. So we've had to really rethink ourselves. So food product is a huge sale for us. So if you've been downstairs, we have a huge line of from grilling sauces to spices to chocolate syrup mm-hmm. to, to jams and jellies, which are huge for us. Um, T-shirts are a good, good product for us. We just launched a new um, 
distiller and roaster coffee. So the the beans are actually in a barrel in our rickhouse in Bardstown. Oh, cool. So when oh, you're on a tour, you get to see that. them. Then they take it back and grind it up and, and put it out. So those have just been launched at both locations. We have an Elijah Craig brand in Bardstown and an Evan Williams brand here. Mm-hmm. Um, so, you know, just lots of different things. But overall, if you go to the two gift shops, it's two different feelings. Mm-hmm. This one's very boutique-y. Here in downtown Louisville, the one in Bardstown is more of a, of a, a true gift shop feel. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, because in Bardstown, it's more of a gift shop vibe that we want the locals to even come by and see us. Mm-hmm. Maybe you'll be able to answer this because I, I've always found it intriguing is that um, you also have some releases that are only available in gift shops, right? Like not even available at the, at retail. And one of the things that, and I love it, it's 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 easy to take on the golf course, It's um, and it's delicious too, are these, uh, what everybody calls the Elijah Craig hand grenades, mm-hmm. right? And it's this little 375, and I mean, it what it does, you hold it in your hand, it looks like a hand grenade, yeah. right? So kind of uh, talk about the, the idea of who, who had that and, um, you know, like, everything that kind of goes behind it so it's one of those things you know everybody you want everybody to take home something from your place so they'll remember you so we've always had a souvenir type bottle and it used to be the jug in bardstown with the little ceramic jug we just thought we'd grown above that and with the elijah craig being a little more elevated image we wanted something new and different so that it's a barrel it's in the shape of a barrel but someone posted it on facebook holding it in their hand <laughs> and then someone said it looks like a grenade and it kind of grew from there so people come in all the time and asking for the elijah craig grenade um just so we back up on that we do we no longer at any point have products that are available in our gift shops we have to um we don't have to there's an allocation across the state of kentucky of anything that we carry in our gift shop more readily available probably it's easier to find than to drive to 27 different liquor stores to come to one of our visitor centers but a certain allocation in, in retailers across the state right so uh what do you kind of see as the future for bourbonism i guess we'll, well, i'm going to put your you know i guess your put your magic eight ball to test here uh you know kind of where do you see the tourism the I, I quote unquote bourbonism growing here in the next 12 months. Um, I've heard several people um, over the past couple months say that they felt like bourbonism is kind of plateauing, and I don't believe that. Mm-hmm. I think I think bourbonism is learning to grow together. So we may have all settled back and, as you said, cruising, but it's definitely going to be driven by the people, and we do not see a, a slowing of the people. Napa Valley has not seen a slowing of the people in the wine industry, and so bourbon is just now taking root and where it can be and where it can grow. And the great thing is, is in Bardstown and especially here in Louisville. It all hinges on the people and the leaders who believe in it. And with Mayor Fisher, there's definitely this growth that he believes in. And so as long as you have those people standing behind you and and your products, it can only go up from here. The one thing we want people to know in downtown Louisville is bourbon is not the only thing in downtown Louisville. We just happen to be one of the great locations that happens to be nestled among all the other great things. So come in downtown Louisville and visit everything and just make a stop here and learn about us on the way. Any other questions on your side, Shannon? I don't. Okay, so... So with that, I want to say, Jeff, thank you so much for being on the show today. You're welcome. It was fantastic to, to not only, I guess this is the first time we've talked to anybody that is doing anything with inside of the, the visitor side and kind of the bourbonism and just to, just to kind of get a better grasp on, you know, not only that, but what's happening here at the Evan Williams Bourbon Experience, the UB, if, you're, if, the you, UB. Want to, if you want to be in the know. Hashtag UB. Yeah. There you go. So make sure you know you follow the UB on all those great social media channels as well as Bourbon Heritage Center, the BHC. Um, you know, is there anything new or next that's going to be coming for these locations as you said you're kind of in cruise control but anything that we can expect for the future or discount code you could throw for only the podcast people or what (laughs) you know we're always open to to discounts around here but the good thing is if you're in downtown louisville if you bring your your room key or you bring a convention badge go you automatically get a discount so we really encourage those people to come so if you're within proximity here in downtown louisville stop by and show them your your room key or your convention badge and get that discount or you just hold on to whatever room key you were staying at some Hyatt at some yeah. point, right? Yeah. <laughs> as long as you get through our doors, it's all we care. We just want the, we just want that time to tell you our story. Um, there's lots of new things coming in the future for Heaven Hill and both of our visitor centers. Um, you'll see some major things happening really soon, but that's as mm-hmm. much exciting as, as, as much as you can say. Right there. You're still doing some rental space. This is a rental yes. Space so we still do rental space at both locations. So okay. this one we do rentals way more than we had ever anticipated. Mm-hmm. Um, in both of our buildings. Dabney Clore oversees that. So if there's things you want to know, go to evanwilliamsbourbonexperience.com. Um, she has a rental package she'll send out to you and kind of tell you about what's going on. Right. And then maybe you can also, can you rent this place for weddings and stuff like that too? You, you like, can, you can. You can rent, we have different rentals. You can rent just one room or you can rent the entire facility from the basement all the way to the third floor. Oh, wow. That's pretty cool. Yeah, that's pretty <laughs> awesome. We call that actually. the experience. Hey, that's a true experience. <laughs> So again, thank you again for coming You're on the welcome, show, Jeff. Guys. This was a it was a pleasure, as I said, to get it from your your side of the story. Cheers uh, to everyone. And yeah. Shannon, thank you again yeah. for uh, for being on the show. It's fantastic to yeah get another viewpoint into this and 
interjecting just a few good questions in there as well. So thank you. Sharing bourbon. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Sharing the experience. Mm -hmm. So uh, if you like what you hear, make sure you follow us on all those great social media channels, uh, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram. Uh, make sure you support the show by giving us reviews on iTunes. You can also tell a friend, uh, share a podcast. If you got somebody that's getting into bourbon, make sure you tell them to listen to the show because it's the greatest way to spread the message and also spread the knowledge. And if you have any more social suggestions of people that we should get in contact with, please send us an email, the duo at bourbonpursuit.com. And uh, yeah, we also are open to sponsors. So if anybody that wants to do that, you can go to our website at bourbonpursuit.com. And then we've got a uh, partnerships tag tagger link right up there. And you can go and you can read the whole media kit that we have out there for anybody that wants to uh, help support the show. Uh, and with that, we will uh, we'll see you all next week. Mm -hmm.